Hi, I'm Peter Pakula. Um, I've been in the lure game for a very, very long time. And over the years, uh, I've developed a lot of things that have become pretty common in game fishing today. Um, for example, the Witch Doctor Teaser, I designed when I was 14 years old, and uh, we now have people copying them who have no idea that I actually designed them that long ago. Um, things like Lumo Green, took 10 years for it to become acceptable. I still hear that green doesn't work here, yet it's one of the most productive lures um, in the world and very often copied. Um, things like UV additives, um, I'm the one who promoted that, plus the luminescence and recently our cat additives, which we're keeping pretty quiet. Um, the first article ever done about me was by Paul B. Kidd many, many years ago where I was called a heretic um, in what is very much today and still is a very traditional um, craft or industry of lure making. Um, I'm getting on and I've got to tell you that over the years it's been very frustrating. As soon as I make a lure I see something wrong with it and I still do. So as I haven't got that long left, I don't think, I hope I do, um, I've decided to basically let loose with my theories which have been proven over the years, uh, possibly not throughout the industry and not in production but basically on a personal level. So we've designed um, a whole bunch of products which you may have seen by now which are the fish, fish print series which um, is a bunch of lures, skirts and strips for daisy, for, uh, daisy chains, spreader bars and dredges. But there's a lot more to it than that. We actually put up a couple of photos recently and I'll, I'll go through it. Um, a lot of this is going to be quite heretical, I think. We put up these, this photo on social media and it did incredibly well with about seven or 800 likes and lots and lots of comments, which was fantastic. Um, everybody commented on the lures, but nobody commented on the heads. And the heads is what we're going to be talking about in this presentation. The heads are incredibly important and I'll go through a few reasons why. And you're going to hear this comment quite a bit over the next couple of um, minutes or hours or however long this video takes. I hope it's a short one. We also put up this video, um, this picture up on social media and everybody loved it. It got a lot of great reactions. And you can see that that head's glowing and it really does look very, very attractive. But from a fish, fisher's point of view, that head looks great, the skirt looks good, but the head looks great. So where's the target? The head, but that's not where the hook is. And you're going to hear that a lot in this conversation about trying to get the fish to eat the lure where the hook is. All right. And we're going to go through a whole bunch of design factors with the lures. And first of all, to get these fish prints sitting up correctly, we're using keeled lures. And all of them but one are keeled. Now, keeling is a very important thing. We want the fish to be um, showing as you see them. And we want the fish to be upright so that when the fish comes alongside, the fish is actually sitting where it's supposed to be. Now, keeling is really quite an interesting subject and we'll basically show you why. Up until now, most people have used lead. Now, if you have a look at the mass of water, it's one gram per cubic centimeter. One gram per cubic centimeter it isn't a lot. Lead is 11 times heavier at 11 grams per cubic centimeter. Air is one thousandth of a gram per cubic centimeter and lures, the plastics used, are basically 1.03 to 1.05 grams per cubic centimetre. So what does this mean? So we're going to go over to the fish tank, and you can see that it's just got water in it. First of all, we'll go through what a normal lure does. Now this is just a normal Pakula sprocket, and for many, many years, everybody looks at them like that. But that may not be how the fish sees them. This is not a keeled lure. If you look at it side on, the insert's not very big. And this goes back to the theory of that's not where the hook is. So basically, even from a very early time, 
we designed heads that were not the main attraction of the lure. We wanted the skirts and even the end of the skirts. You'll notice on Pakula lures, we actually leave bits of the underskirt out and they're very often in a very contrast color because that's where the hook is and that's where we want the fish to bite. So when this is put in the water, it will sit up any way it wants. You just move it around a bit and you'll see that there's no keeling on that. But you can see there that when it's side on, it's not a really a massive target for the fish at all. So that's not where the fish is going to bite it because if a fish bites there, it could get jammed in its throat and it's not going to, um, it could flick out and it's not where the hook is. We really want the fish to bite the hook. So now we've got one of the new heads. This is a power jet. And you can see it's a mirror. We're actually going to be using this on the fish skirts too. It's a keeled jet as well. It's got about an ounce of lead in it. And so it's pretty heavily keeled. And you can see that that lure will sit upright. Pretty much no matter what you do with it, it'll sit upright. But what you will see is that with any movement of the water, it actually moves the head around considerably. So you can imagine on a rough day, that really isn't as stable as you'd want it to be. Okay. And now we bring in the 3D heads that we're doing for the fish print heads, which are actually got Venturi jets, which we'll explain later, and they're actually dual leader hole, which we'll also explain later. But when you put it in the water, you'll actually see that it sits upright the whole time, and no matter what you do with it, it comes back into position directly, and it's buoyant, and if you know anything about um, lures that you cast, the most favourable lures in history are light wooden lures because they're more buoyant. Buoyancy gives lures much more action than any other system. Okay, so that's pretty much why we've air killed these lures, because we can get as much air in there as most people used to get um, lead, and it's a thousand times more effective. Okay? Or well, divided by 10, it's 100 times more effective. I'm no maths juniors. Okay, that's why we use um, air because it's so much lighter than water and the plastics that it's much more effective than, than lead. And also, it saves us using toxic uh, lead uh, when we're making inserts. Uh, and I'm sure once people try it, the lure makers in their heads, they'll actually go to air keeling rather than lead keeling. Okay, the next topic is why we have offset leader holes. When we're trolling, we actually have the lines at different angles. You can sort of see on this area, on the lure where we're using the upper lure tube, it's on a close lure with a very steep angle of the line in position, such as the short corner and the short rigger. By using the offset leader hole, we actually dig the lure into the wave. So it doesn't porpoise as much and it really does um, dig in deeper and has a much wilder action. The central leader hole is for the shallow angle lures, which are the long corner, long rigger and shotgun positions, or if you haven't got outriggers, basically all the positions except for the short corner. Now, if you use the steep angled lure on a shallow angled line, it should work very well, but it could well and do very large corkscrews, which we don't really want them to do. Um, and you can tell that by the lure breathing, going down, and when it comes up, it doesn't come up where it went down. It basically comes up to the side. If it's doing that, it's corkscrewing, you're better off moving the leader back to the central hole. Okay, the Venturi jets on either side of the leader holes actually create a difference in pressure between the front of the lure and the back of the lure, and actually increases stability and increases actually the smoke trail inside the lure because we want those fish once again to be quite visible and be the target so the actual smoke trail is concentrated more through the inside of the lure and out the, ins out the back of the lure between the skirts rather than hiding the lure on the outside so there's a lot of reasons to use Venturi jets they're very hard to do in normal production but with the 3d printing it's not that hard to do also the uh, the borders around those jets actually adds a lot of weight, once again improving the keeling of the lures. Okay, I hope that makes a bit of sense. Okay, the 3D series that we are doing um, for the fish skirt heads, and we can do them for other skirts if you want them, um, 
First of all is the sprocket series, which is designed to be long corner if you need it, but mainly long rigger and shotgun. The next one that we're doing are the 3D roach series, which includes the cockroach, mouse, rat and wombat. These are mainly for the short rigger and sometimes the short corner, but really shouldn't be used on the shotgun. The next range is the long chuggers in which we've got the Phantom, Guru, Bagwan, and Smoking Joe. These are very much long corner lures and shotgun lures, where they really do work their best and where they should be used. This 3D short chugger series includes the Hornet, Shaker, Pacemaker, and Cannonball, and these are designed for the short corner or any position when it's particularly rough and you really shouldn't be out there. These lures really dig in, have an incredibly violent action, and do unbelievably well. So that's it for the 3D series. Okay, I hope all of that makes sense so far. So let's just have a quick look at the last bit. So you can see here we've got three lures, both rigged. And you can see that this head looks really nice. It's nice and shiny. And we are doing this in the fish skirts for the more traditional thinkers. And it looks really good. But remember, that's not where the hook is. The hook is down here. So that's really where we want the fish to bite from the skirt down and hopefully on the hook, which is why we actually have this fluorescent yellow heat shrink on there, once again to be a target, because generally the fish come up from behind the lure, so we really want them to eat those hooks most of the time. Of course, people use teasers where this isn't really that relevant. But even with the twin hook rigs, you can see that the hook is still not on the head. We really do want the fish to eat the skirt so for me personally, the 3D heads, apart from the um, added action, added keeling, are certainly the way to go. Well, that's about it. So I hope um, a lot of this made sense. I hope it doesn't upset too many people. But really, I think these 3D heads, and of course you think um, by the reaction to the skirts, you think the skirts are a winner, for which I'm eternally grateful. But please, when you're buying these lures, please give those 3D heads a try. Uh, we've got new 3D printers. The heads are much more reinforced than the old shredders, uh, but the new shredders are certainly reinforced as well, so they'll last you a lot longer. So thank you for your support and thank you for your time watching this little video. Thank you.